So this is a spineless process. The, the spineless process should be equidistant from the medial end of the clavicles. It's like your trachea midline, right? So if it's there, then it's not much rotated, right? Next thing is your inspiratory film, okay? Ideally, in a sick patient, sometimes it's not possible, but you need to say it's an inspiratory film or expiratory film. You need to see at least more than five to six ribs in a proper inspiration film. Next is projection, whether it's a PA view or an AP view, okay? In emergency and portable situations, they do uh, AP view, but in when you're going to the department, actually the they'll do a PA view. Or you can say if the clavicle is outside your chest, it's a proper inspiratory film. Or if it's in, into the chest and the scapula is obscuring your V, that's an expiratory film, right? Uh, and exposure wise, is it overexposed or underexposed or adequately exposed? Overexposed is, you know, can you see the, the, the thoracic vertebra here? Yeah. It should be just visible. If it's too bright, overexposed. If you cannot see it, it's underexposed. Happy? Okay, so patient details, indication, do you have any old images to compare with? And then you go for right, which is your rotation, inspiration, projection and exposure. Then you come to the uh, chest x-ray interpretation. Okay, can I have the next slide? So A is your airway. Okay, we look at your trachea and then your bronchus and the deviations of stuff. Okay, in trachea, we've already seen if it's, uh, if it's, uh, if the spinous process is equidistant from middle end of the clavicles. If it is, then we know that it is not rotated. Then you can comment on the trachea, whether it's midline or it's been pushed or pulled to one side. Then you comment on the carina. It's very important about the carina because when you are looking at the NG tube, it will dissect the carina. So that's the reason you need to identify the carina. And then your right main bronchus, left main bronchus. Why I'm asking about mentioning what the bronchus is, your right main bronchus is a bit stout and short and straight. Whereas the left main bronchus is more angulated. Hence, most of your foreign bodies and stuff, it gets stuck in your right main bronchus, okay? And that's reason sometimes in aspiration, the most common lung to be involved is your right lung, okay? That's when you need to identify that. And then you have to say whether the trachea is pushed or pulled to one side, but you need to make sure that it's not a rotated film. If it's completely rotated, then you can't comment on the trachea. Is it okay? Am I going too fast? Are you okay with that pace? Perfect. Next, going to, once you've cleared the air, airway, then go for B is for breathing. Breathing wise, you look at the lung and the pleura. In a normal patient, in a normal chest x-ray, you cannot see the pleura, right? Because your visceral and parietal pleura is all embedded into it, right? So you like to look from the lungs, look from the lungs from the top to the bottom again, whether it's full, uh, fully uh, up, do you have any uh, consolidation or any patchiness there, or do you have complete white out? There are lots of reasons for that, okay? Or if you see the pleura, basically if you have a blank bunch of air and you could see two lines in between or a single line with a marking, then it's a pneumothorax. You need to identify that, right? That's your breathing. Your circulation, you look for the heart. Remember, in your AP view, because I mentioned the view initially, in your AP view, your heart will be a bit enlarged, okay? That's the reason you can't comment on the cardiomegaly on an AP view, to be honest. That's the reason you look for a PA view to comment on a cardiomegaly, right? Approximately, your heart should be less than 50% of the entire thoracic width, okay? You mentioned this level, it should be the about 50% of stuff. If it's more than that, then you have cardiomegaly. <laughs> then you start from the top, you have the uh, aortic knuckle and then you have the aortic pulmonary window, okay? So these might be gone off, especially in uh, your aortic knuckle, if you have got aneurysm, it will be flat. And uh, your AP window, if you have got like malignancy, if you have got miniature lymph nodes, it will cover it and you cannot be able to see that. Okay, uh, and then uh, with regards to your heart also, sometimes you might have a little bit of an air in around your heart, which is your pneumomediastinum and stuff. So look for any fresh air in between those, right? Either in, when you're doing it in lungs or it in C, you should also look at your hilum, okay, whether it's thickened or flushed or the, how is the vasculature and stuff, right? Next, coming to the uh, diaphragm. Diaphragm is it your right will also will always be elevated than the left because of your liver, but it shouldn't be too much elevated. Okay. Look at the cardiophrenic angle. Look at the costophrenic angle. Is it blunt? If it's blunt, is it an effusion? Is it a consolidation? So you need to look through those, and then you also need to look if it is any air under the diaphragm. Okay. So sometimes it can be a normal physiological one. For example, your one of your bowel might come a little bit close to the liver and you might be able to see some kind of bowel shadow. You couldn't say that it's an air under the diaphragm. It can be a normal variant also. Then you need to get your senior help to see if it's really air under the diaphragm or is it a normal thing called a chelardity syndrome. 
Okay? Uh, so you always need to look if there is any error in the diaphragm. If so, speak to the senior. Next is everything else. Then again, you come from the top. You first look for your mediastinum, which you've already looked into it. Look for your bones, if there's any fracture. Trace everything slowly. Remember, these ribs that you're pointing, it's all the posterior aspect. It's not the anterior aspect. The anterior aspect is this curvature. Can you see the curvature here? That's your anterior aspect. Because the PA view, your posterior gets more focused. Right? And then uh, you look for your lines. Like if you've got a central line, whether it's in place, if you've got a NG tube, whether it dissects the carina, or if you have any swelling in the soft tissues like subcutaneous emphysema, if you have a chest strain, if you have a chest strain, is it in the right place, etc. Sometimes when you're working in the cardiology ward, patients will have pacemakers. If you have an old x-ray, you can compare whether the leads are displaced or not based on an x-ray findings. Okay? That's a quick whiz through about it. So you initially verify the patient's age and details, patient, patient's age, date it was taken, uh, indication why you're doing it, think about it in your mind, and then do you have any old images for comparison. Then just to make sure the, the x-ray is adequate and appropriate, you do the RIPE, which is your rotation, inspiration, projection, and exposure. Then you go for A, B, C, D, E. Before you comment on it, next slide please. Look at it. Have, these are the hidden areas. Have you looked at the apices? Because you might miss a pneumothorax because you have not looked into it. Because it is one of the most uh, missed areas. Then you look at the hilar region. Okay, Do you have any air? Is it a chunky hilum? Is it a chunky pulmonary vasculature? And then you look at the lung peripheries to see if it's a, if there is a small pneumothorax here or not. And then take it from there. Once you have done all these three stages, then you can say, fine. My findings from the x-ray are so and so. Sometimes it might be, like for example, you might see an obvious consolidation here. And you say, oh, it's a consolidation, you might jump into it. However, there might be some kind of a pneumothorax also here. You might not know. Okay? That's the reason you go systematically and then you will not miss anything. Especially, you know, when you are doing your, your nights, especially in, in a 2 a.m., somebody shows you an x-ray, your mind will be, you know, uh, it will be in a frozen mode and stuff and you cannot process things quickly. If you go to this systematic approach, you would not miss anything.